every human being I encounter craves confidence. But they think oftentimes it's a mysterious wind that will descend upon them. It's not. Confidence is a result of a series of choices. So Michael, we all know how important confidence is in life, right? In every aspect of life. And we know when we have it, but how do you develop it? Yeah, it's, it's great. I'm so excited about this particular conversation with you, Jack and Paul, because it is the number one topic that when someone reaches out to me, they ask to talk about. They're like, can we talk about building my confidence? Now this is true of student athletes. This is true of coaches. This is true of executives. Everybody wants confidence as though it's something to be discovered. Right. Confidence needs to be cultivated. Now, I am way into acrostics. So I like to be able to communicate ideas through actually spelling out the word. So I've been thinking, because I request it all the time, what does it look like to develop confidence? So I have come up with nine choices you can make that spell C-O-N-F-I-D-E-N-T, that if you apply these, you will get to the end of that and go, I feel more confident. Can, can I share this real quickly and just go through sure, the list? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. First and foremost, the courage to take risks. Oh, optimistic about a brighter and a better tomorrow. N, negative thoughts removed. Mm -hmm. F, faith in a greater purpose. I, identity separate from accomplishment. D, doing the work. E, expressive enthusiasm. N, negative thoughts replaced. And T, tenacity and a refusal to give up. The most important of all of those is C, courage to take risks. Let me talk about that for a second. If you can imagine something you're afraid of doing right now, go do it. The thing that you're afraid of doing right now, do it. That conversation, that initiative, that whatever, do it. Because the more we actually take risks, our confidence grows. But see, here's the problem, you said it. You know, People are feeling like, I don't know how to do this and I'm afraid of doing this and, and, and there's insecurity. Because it might not work, right? Yeah. I go do this, it might be a failure, yeah. perceived failure. So I have this yeah. so how do you how do I go, to go out there? How do I then, go do yeah. it? Yeah. But, see, but see, it doesn't matter if you achieve it or not. See, the best example I like to use, particularly with young athletes, is like, think of that person you really want to ask out. Yeah. Go ask them out. Right. Don't take three months. Don't write a note to their friend and say check yes or no and pass it across them. Like, just ask them out. And I've said this to, to our student athletes. What's the worst that can happen? They say no. You're gonna be okay. But here's the point, just by doing it, the goal is not always thinking about the outcome. Well, what's gonna happen? Is it gonna work? The question is not, is it going to work? The question is, is it the right thing to do? It might work, it might not. But what happens is, as you take courageous steps forward, and then the other pieces too, negative thoughts, they keep getting in my mind. Right? And so it decreases my confidence. So I need to remove those thoughts and replace them with other thoughts. Mm -hmm. That that's actually a decision. I mean, it's not your fault if a bird lands on your head. It becomes your fault though if you allow that bird to build a nest. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. I can't help if a thought comes into my mind. Right. But if all of a sudden, if I'm walking across you know, campus or here in, here in LA. Yeah, it and continues to and, fester. Well, yeah, and, and there's like a bird, a bird nest on my head with right. little birds there. You're and like- I just let, keep letting it- or they're hatching well, You're not gonna be looking at me down. going, well, I don't know how it got there. You're like, there's a nest on your head. You actually let that, cultivated that, and we obsess. So how do you, okay, so that's a great point. Yes. Because negative things do creep in, yes. right? And we all have that negative self-talk. Um, when that comes in, how would you counsel somebody to remove it? Yeah. So you remove it by simply identifying it, saying it's here, mm -hmm. it's a thought from the outside, I'm not gonna own it. Like I can't control that it came in. In the same way, if I said to you right now, Jack, you're a loser. Right. 
I don't think you are. But if I said you are a loser, how can you say that about Jack? Well, you can't sit there and go, well, I must be a loser because Michael Brown said it. No, I'm an outside thought speaking to you and you actually get to decide. Do I embrace that or do I push it out? So that's why I said in many ways, the two ends and confident Mm -hmm. is one negative thoughts removed but then you have to replace. If you leave a vacuum, it's gonna yeah. fill back in. So you actually have to tell yourself, what is actually true of me? Yeah. It's all about truthfulness, speaking the truth to yourself, and not hype. You know, we talk a lot about in sports, you know, I'm, you're my hype man, and no, I'm not gonna tell an athlete what is not true. I'm not gonna say to a student athlete, you're the most extraordinary basketball player I have ever met. Not true. Right. But what I can say to them is, you're enough. Right. You have what it takes. You put in the work, and you are an extraordinary human being. Let's go back to me yeah. being a loser. <laughs> I got no. no I don't, we don't need to talk about no, that. I, I, no, I, you want to talk about yeah, that? No, I have a serious question. Okay. So I think a lot, <laughs> I really do. I think a lot of young people they're so worried about what their peers think of them. Right. Mm-hmm. So what you you know I'm at an age where if you think I'm a loser, I've already developed enough of a sense of self that I can take it or leave it. It doesn't really matter. I already have my self perception of who I am. But if I'm 17 years old, I do worry often that this guy and that guy and that one and she and he and they might think I'm a loser. How do you counsel young people to not worry so much about what their peers think about them? Well, again, I, if, I, if I say to a young person, stop worrying about what other people think of you. Stop comparing yourself. Stop. If I just keep saying stop, 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 that's not going to do the work. Right. The work is I'm going to help them develop their identity. Because again, the I in confident is identity separated from performance. So I'm gonna actually say, and, and I talk a lot about in, in my world, I've conceptualized the four seasons of a person's life. Mm-hmm. Identity, investigation, influence, and inspiration. Those first 20 years is all about identity. Feeling good in your own skin, liking who you are. So part of that work is actually saying, this is who you are. This is who you're becoming. These are the qualities and characteristics that are true of you. If you are actually developing your identity, and and that's another conversation for another time, actually identity development is not something that happens by accident. It actually can be an intentional work, Mm -hmm. intentional choices, that as you develop your identity, when that thought comes, it bounces off. Versus always thinking, I gotta get rid of it. It literally, as you do the work, it's similar to practice. Let's talk about sports. If you put in the work and you practice and you practice and you practice and you practice, the game is where it just you execute it naturally. So if I'm if I'm reflecting on what kind of identity I have and want to become, if I think about things, I want to become a good person. I want to treat people well, and I start to do those things, and I start to see myself in that way. Mm-hmm. And then when you tell me I'm a loser, I don't feel like a loser because I know deep down I'm a very good person. I'm I'm giving to other folks, and so that becomes my identity. And then what your what your opinion of me doesn't matter as much. That's correct. Is that am I am well, I on the right track? No, with that? I think you I think you're right because you're you're actually proactively building the identity versus always trying to make sure nothing gets in that's going to disrupt me. You're actually right. doing the work of building the thing right. as as opposed to always protect, 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 make sure, make sure. Right. Um, so that's how I think about that. I would also say this: is it's interesting. Uh, there's some there's some really unique research out there right now on confidence that describes the connection and correlates the connection between honoring your commitments and feeling confident. So for instance, if I am unable to keep the commitments I've made to myself Mm -hmm. or the commitments I've made to others, either privately or publicly, my confidence sags. But if I can say, I'm gonna get up at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning and I actually get up at 6 a.m., I'm going to actually eat this for lunch and not, I'm gonna eat this salad for lunch and not you know, a box of Oreos. Yeah. Whatever the case is, if I can keep my commitments, the things I say and design and the things I say I'm gonna do, if I do them and do them, if I make you a commitment, mm-hmm. you're, it's, 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 a, um, it's a bonus kind of add on to confidence. Mm-hmm. Interesting, because you know, when you're on a team, you hear a lot of times parents will tell their kids, to honor the commitment to the team. Let's say especially if the kid is going through a season that they don't like and they want to quit or yeah. whatever. And this idea of honoring your commitments. But I've never heard it put into that context of honoring your commitment actually increases your confidence. It's a really interesting way well, of looking at it. Well, because at the very root of a lack of confidence, at the very root and the core of a poor self-image is this belief that I don't have what it takes. That I'm actually not significant. 
that the things I do don't make a difference, that I'm actually not strong, that my choices cannot change things, that I can't keep my commitments, right? That I can actually choose my way into change. Those ideas, when you believe them to be true, you're gonna lack confidence. Right. And so you're actually going against you know, the grain when you say, no, I'm actually gonna to choose to do things consistently and you'll see your confidence. Because everyone's saying, I need to build my confidence. Now I will tell you this too. It's not my responsibility to give confidence to anyone. And I hear this a lot in athletics. You know, the coach hasn't, the coach hasn't given me confidence. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or the coach took away my confidence. Yeah. Right. Confidence is not something that someone can take from you or give to you. Correct. Similar to motivation. Similarly, if someone asks me to speak at their event, I'll ask them, you know, what are you looking for? And they'll say, well, we need a motivational speaker. I'm like, I'm not your guy. Because I can't motivate anyone. Motivation comes from within. Um, I can't give it to you, I can't take it from you, I can inspire you, I can encourage you, I can instruct you, I can give you tips, but if you lack motivation, there's some inner work that needs to be done. Similar with confidence. You know, I can't give you confidence and I can't take away your confidence. But it's easy to say that because if I'm feeling a lack of confidence, I can say my coach took it away from me. Or you know, my significant other needs to give that to me. But what happens is then we make confidence a circumstance outside of me that I have no control over versus a choice, series of choices that I make to actually grow in confidence. Now again, there's, not an issue, there's no such thing as, oh, I'm confident or not confident. Because again, it's all about progress. We're all evolving. There's gonna be times when we're not feeling the confidence, but even in the midst of a lack of confidence in any particular situation, I can still choose courage. I can still choose optimism. I can choose faith. I'm going through the acrostic again. I can still choose to be tenacious. You talked about it, Jack. The ability to say, if it's been a hard season, you know what? But I'm gonna stay right here. I'm all in. It's been hard, but I'm choosing to stay here because that was the commitment I made. Because that's the tie, if I can wrap us up. If you learn to honor your commitments and not see confidence as something outside of you, but a series of choices to actually cultivate something inside of you, then you will experience, I think, true confidence. Hey, Paul. Yeah. This is the part where we're supposed to tell people to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Okay, will you please do that then? I mean, yeah. if you enjoy it, yeah. please do. And if you don't, do it anyways, because we need your help. Yeah, we do. <laughs> also, we have a website called GameChangeNation.com. Just go there and subscribe and you'll get tons of free content. And what we're really trying to do is create a community of people that love sports yep. and the great lessons that we learn from sports, but we want to hear from you. We do. So we're going to have a bunch of social media pages from TikTok to Instagram to Twitter to Facebook, Instagram, I probably already said all of them. Please join them and tell us your stories. We'd love to hear from you. Oh, and we wrote a book. Oh. Forgot about that. Forgot that. The book is called Through the Tunnel. It's available on Amazon now. If you go straight down here to this link that you can see below us, you will be able to purchase it. We'd love it if you could do it. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.